Welcome back to the second part of the anime recap Dragon Raja. In case you missed the first one, here's a quick rundown of what happened. The main man is a simp loser, who is played by his queen in front of everyone. A new queen that happens to be a hot red head, swoops in and saves the day. The loser proved to be an S rank, hence he got accepted to a high class academy that turns out to be a university that seeks humans with dragon blood to teach them about the real history of the world, how to control their powers, and how to slay dragons. His first day met with a fiery welcome literally. He was able to make an epic entrance, defeat the two highest ranked students, with the help of his little bro whom he only can see. After passing the entrance exam with the help of a friend he met along the way, Mang Fei found himself in trouble, just like how his little bro predicted. He and other students had to solve a map built like a puzzle to save two other students he met before. Using a cheat code spell given to him by little bro, the main man managed to solve the puzzle and find a way for the students to escape from a sunken city where a dragon lord used to live. However, the city was protected by a dragon servant, so escape was never an option. The dragon killed the kids and the professor overseeing the mission. That said, they managed to secure a vase containing a dragon, making their mission not a complete failure. And with that out of the way, time to resume this nicely animated story. Back in the dorm, Mingfei receives an email from Nono on behalf of Caesar, inviting him to the student union's ball dance. Following her advice, Mingfei and Finger had to borrow suits from the drama club. They arrive at the event, which happens to be the birthday party for Nono. With both guys being made and less, the pair ended up dancing with one another. It was quite a fun experience to see from Finger's perspective, but quite a horrifying one from Mingfei's perspective. Caesar then showed up on a balcony and gave a speech about castle students, acknowledging his guest as the best among the best and inviting all of them to join the student union, particularly Lu Mingfei who gets put on the spot, yet the host doesn't demand an answer right away. Instead, he grants Lu Mingfei time to think as well as a song of his choosing to dance to. The silent girl from the 3E test, who was playing with the band, left the group and asked Ming Fei for a dance. When he asked for her name, she told him to call her Zero. Zero guided the dance and put on a wonderful show worthy of everyone's applause. After Zero left the party as well as Nono, so the simp lord went running after the redhead. Suddenly, a group of armed mercenaries created an explosion on the outside and infiltrated the school, so every student was instructed to arm themselves and defend the school. Meanwhile, Ming Fei and Nono were on their way to a special spot in the mountain where the queen likes to relax from time to time. During the ride, Ming Zhe appears to the main man, meaning Ming Fei has fallen asleep while driving, which funny enough was a good thing because if it weren't for his heads up about a sharp corner head, they would have taken a dive straight to hell. Ming Zhe then teases his boy having feeling for Nono, but the latter being a simp refuses to admit them, so after some more mild teasing, he hands Ming Fei a cheat code called, show me the flowers. Back to the action, the infiltrators had made it deep inside the campus and now hiding and even though a member of them got caught, a chick giving orders through the phone ensures the leaders they won't be having too many problems as the instructor's next move would be to shut down the energy fields surrounding the school so that they can look for them using their power. This in turn will allow them to go deeper using their powers and secure their objective. At the top of the mountain, they found the small lake. Nono challenged him to dip his feet in the water, which was unexpectedly cold unlike the situation back in school. After the energy field got lifted, the leader used her ability to hide herself and her guy in the shadows while Professor Ball used his void snakes to search for them. Meanwhile, one member of the group was tasked to go alone and retrieve the vase the college got from the Bronze City. At the church, Scissor uses his Yanlin, a power that allows him to scan his surroundings and see whoever steps in it, while enhancing his other sense simultaneously. While on the other end, the Lionheart Club is instructed to leave their location, but Nazi Han, he got instructed to stay alone and hold the spot in the library, which might as well be the same situation Scissor is gonna find himself in soon. You see, as the ninja squad made their way slowly to the church and got caught, the leader introduced herself as Mai Sakatoku, Aki's big sister. Sister gives his condolences, which the mommy material doesn't care for, stating that their relationship wasn't strong since they didn't grow up together. With this situation cleared, Mia gets back to work and throws her phone with music on, which Caesar knows they agree as soon as the music ends, the fight will start. However, the music cuts sooner than expected, catching the students off guard, but not Scissor, the blonde John Wick who starts dropping bodies left and right. After the dust settles, Scissor notices the kids are not fatally wounded as the enemies are using bullets like the ones the students use in the celebration. Madi reveals that her objective is to slow down Scissor, while another chick slows down his rival Zihan. Hearing the sheer confidence in her voice, the big man tells the AI to set a timer to shut her down, but it soon proved to be quite a tricky job. Meanwhile, Zihan's opponent finally arrived alone with no weapon in hand. 
Zihan's mentor pointed out her spirit language might be so strong, she won't be needing a weapon. Hence, the man orders his pupil to end it as quickly as possible. Zihan used his Yaonlin, King Flame, a very rare and dangerous spirit power, thus the reason the instructor ordered everyone to leave. However, what the instructors didn't make count is the girl having the same power. Meanwhile, that one slick member has made it all the way to the AI operating system, where he meets with the freaky side of the AI, Ava. Surprisingly, their chat was quite peaceful, fun, and lighthearted. She even showed the lad the way to his objective. That said, the young man did feel a hint of uncertainty and threat, so he ran away. After arriving in front of a closed gate underwater, the guy couldn't but feel something is off. He then hears someone calling him brother out of the blue, prompting him to open the door without meaning to. Back with the S rank, Nona revealed that she was the one who invited him to the dance and also confessed that it was her birthday, which she attempted to keep a secret. Then the girl asked the main man to join their club, so naturally, Ming Fei thought this whole trip was a setup to get him into the club, but she assures him that she wants him in and be under her to personally guide him like his big sister, not for scissor or any other crab. After clearing up the situation, Milano brings back her birthday topic and calls back on the time she spent with her mother before she died, bringing the mood down. Hence, to lift it back up, the main man decided to use Ming Zi's cheat code. Ming Zi had prepared a fireworks show with music from the car play in the background. It was quite a powerful moment that brought Nomino to tears. Ming Fei then made her smile when he accepted the offer to join the club. Back with the little weasel making his way through the locked gates, the boy ran into a shark that funny enough ran away from him due to some kind of curse that makes the animals scared of the man. As he makes his way to the room where the vase is kept, we see the principal talking with a group of bald scientists about what they found and the importance of the discovery. Yet the copy-pasted characters don't care about all that crap, they just want to dissect it in a kinky way. Therefore, when they try to jump the gun and get too freaky after learning that something in it might get out, the principal threatens their leader to back down and turn the laser off so they don't damage the egg. Seeing a perfect opening for him after everyone has left, a guy goes and starts taking pics of the egg, but when he looks at the hole, he hallucinates a little kid calling him brother, making him jump back poofily and drop the 5 million worth mission. However, another figure enters the room and picks up the bottle to finish the job, and even though we don't see his face, it was quite obvious it was the principal, who also happens to be the one behind the 5 million worth job. Back in the church, the blonde John Wick is still fighting the Dami Mommy. He challenges Ma Yi to a duel. If she can land a hit on him, after three tries, she wins. Ma Yi's first attack was pretty easy to see through, unlike the second one where she made a mirror image of her. But luckily enough, the man with all the charm, who can do lots of harm, has quick feet on him. That said, Scissor's quick feet won't be a factor in the third attack as Ma Yi has surrounded him from all sides with fake sword images. Therefore, he closes his eyes to use his hearing sense to its maximum power which proved to be a wise choice since he was able to locate the chick through her butterfly hairpin. Although the man won fair and square, the chick still pulled a gun on him, putting his pretty ass in a sticky situation. Luckily though, a little kid calling for his brother made an explosion in the area, forcing both parties to stop the fight. When they look around for some clues of what happened, they see footprints melted in the ground and then get more anxious realizing that the kid went by them without Caesar noticing, which is a big red flag since his scan ability picks everything in the area, even a fly passing by. Ma Yi decides to call her partner slash employer to learn what the hell they were after since what she is now seeing defiantly wasn't a part of the job. Meanwhile, the battle between the two King Fire users is still going strong with the instructors commenting that the girl's power is on par if not more than Zinhan. Since she is pulling back her punches, her objective is not to kill. They then notice the final member of the ninja squad trying to flee away, and they fail to stop him. However, when the man starts feeling himself too much and starts flexing, a car suddenly crashes into him. Yup, the pair has finally made it back to school. Ming Fei goes to check on the man, and after a brief hostile interaction, the lads recognize each other. Turns out the man is Ming Fei's online buddy, Old Tang. The wholesome reunion soon turns into a goofy hostage situation, which was pretty funny to see. Sadly though, it was interrupted by the arrival of Constantine, the brother of the dragon King Norton, who was attempting to reach the car freaking the boy out of their mind. After the escape, the instructor orders the students to open fire, which soon proved to be useless as the bullets melt when they get in contact with the kid's energy shield, so they decided to use bigger toys. But all they managed to do is make the kid angry. Constantine uses his Yanlin King Fire blasting everything around him. Zihan and the girl sense the blast and agree to stop the fight as this wasn't a part of the girl's plan. Professor Bald calls his father to put back the shield around the school, but the cool old man tells him it wouldn't do much in their fight since they are facing one of the direct descendants of the Black Dragon King. 
Back with the main group, the three hiding from the creature get spooked by Finger appearing from nowhere, alerting the kid of their location. After coming across Sisser and Mai Yi in the Hall of Heroes, Sisser ordered them to retreat while he and Mai Yi distracted Constantine. Ming Fei tries to stick behind but gets dragged by Finger after telling him the main character is here. This is none of our business. After the group leaves, Ma Yi gets a call from her partner, telling her that the bullets with sedatives in them will do the trick. Taking her advice, Scissor doesn't hesitate to shoot a minor in the head, pushing him back soon all the other students open fire. Meanwhile, the trio hiding in the pool are having the time of their lives till they heard the kid approaching them, so the bonding time turns into diving time. Ming Fei couldn't hold his breath long enough and surface to find himself in a new dimension, thinking it was Ming Zia working. The s ranks start looking around for him and runs into Constantine, who peacefully asks for his brother. Ming Fei recalls the map he unlocked when he sees the Bronze City building. Realizing this kid is the creature chasing him from earlier, Ming Fei starts losing his mind as usual. Ming Zia then appears from nowhere and drop kicks the other kid, telling him, Go get your own brother, leave mine. Now back in the real world, Ming Fei wakes up to find his bros have left him. Principal Anju then entered the pool and took him to a building overlooking the battle. He then hands him a special bullet capable of ending a supreme dragon. Soon after the kid transforms into his dragon form, Anju joins the field and makes use of his skill Time Zero to attack Constantine, allowing Ming Fei to shoot him in the head with a spirit element bullet. With the help of his little bro, Ming Fei was successful in his task, forcing Constantine to use the last of his energies to reach Tang and use his body to shield him from all the bullets raining on them. This overwhelming experience reactivates his memories of being the Dragon King Norton and the dude makes one of the coolest hair flips in 2D history. Back on the campus, the principal talks with his old friend the Shield Overseer, who questions the motives behind Anju letting Norton get his memories back instead of killing him on the spot when he was weak. Because of my hybrid blood, I've been alive for over 100 years. Only me and you left, old man. All we need is a sword. A sword that cuts the future of the dragons. I don't have much time left. I need to end this war and kill the four dragon kings instead of sealing them as we always do. Anju further explains that to kill an elder dragon, you have to make them furious enough, so they are forced to gamble their eternal life and fight the humans to the end, without thinking about their next move. Back in the dorm, the boys are recalling what happened and the aftermath, before changing the subject to what club Mingfei will join, which the latter confirms to be the student union. Speaking about the union, their leader do be having a pleasant breakfast with the principal, where they talk about the upcoming mission to hunt down the Dragon King of Fire Norton. Thus, Scissor called some of the student union members, including fellow freshman Zero, to an emergency meeting. Their school had solicited the top students to assist in a dragon-slaying mission at the Three Gorges Dam in China. Initially frightened, Mingfei said, Hell no, I ain't dying today, fam, and kept acting like a loser while Scissor pressing him. But then Nono entered the room and offered Mingfei some reassurance, promising to take care of him. So the simp folds in and agrees. Later, Mingfei gets trained under his seniors for two months before the mission. From swimming, diving, running, and hand-to-hand -hand combat, the boys did all they could to turn the boy into a dependable man. Before he set out, Ming Fei talked with his boy, voicing his concern and wondering if someone will be sad for him if he died. Finger tries to lift his spirit, so to thank him for being a solid bro, Ming Fei gave him his credit card to use to the fullest in case he dies in the mission. And funny enough, Finger takes that shit and starts ordering, ignoring Ming Fei, till the main man speaks up and lets everything out of his chest. So Figure returns the card and tells things will be okay. Don't worry and believe in your luck, it got you so far. But we all know that luck is another word for plot armor. That said, once at the Three Gorges Dam, the leader of the mission, Professor Bald, described the battle plan. A team of divers would swim down into the Sea of Bronze and locate Norton's embryo since it was assumed that he would go into a metamorphosis process to reincarnate into his dragon form. The divers would then detonate an explosive to wake him up. Once the weakened dragon reached the surface, the crew on the ship would hit him with an advanced torpedo. Group A, the divers, initially were supposed to be Zero and Scissor, but since Zero is on that special time of the month. Thus, Team B, consisting of the main man and his queen, dive instead. The pair reached the mural that protected the city where the man gate came to life and bit Ming Fei's arm. It released him after tasting his blood, which had enough dragon blood purity to grant them access. It was a bit funny how he tried to swim away, but Nono just caught him by one leg, unfazed. After wrapping bandages around the small cut on his finger, the pair get sucked into the gate landing and a cave with clean air to breathe, which is kinda alarming since it should be like that, making Nona realize the master of the castle, Norton is back. 
Now inside the city, the pair use a liquid given by the professor to show them the way, and as they go deeper, they contemplate the different passages and structures on their way, analyzing the remains of an ancient battle between humans and dragons. They reach a statue built for Norton. Nona points out that this was a place for worship, hence it's not the final room since the master would not live where people come and go, and so they dive again, swimming deep till they reach a graveyard. Again, Ming Fei's blood is used to open a pathway to another level not seen before, during it they lose communication with the ship, freaking the fellas up there who try to find them using their powers, which is too late as the pair lands in another layer of the city unexplored before. Now, actually inside Constantine and Norton's palace, the pair look around and reach the house where they lived, Nano used her profiling skills to experience some of the dragon twins' lives and nature. Turns out, Nono also used her ability on Ming Fei when they wanted to recruit him as well as when he solved the puzzle. Freaking about what she might have seen, Ming Fei tells her to put the bomb so they can get out. Nono sets the timer and picks a light to see around just to realize this shouldn't be lit, in other words, the master is here. Ming Fei ran as fast as possible and Nono followed back to the graveyard, where they see the city starting to self-destruct, so they swim back to the main lair. Remembering the path from the time Ming Fei solved the puzzle for his schoolmate, the pair dive to the gate leading out of the city. Meanwhile, on the ship, the professor calls Team A to be dead. But Scissor still holds hope, something surely is valuable as we see the pair swimming through tunnels leading them to a dead end. Ming Fei shouts Black Sheep Wall, and suddenly they can hear Finger's voice. It was done by hijacking the professor's brain and sending the signal through it. We see Finger trying his best to find a way, but his F rank rating limits his access to computer systems. That was till he remembered he has his homie card, allowing him to call on Eva, the other personality no one knows about, to help them decipher the remaining parts of the map. Back on the ship, the professor has reached his limit and is no longer conscious as his brain is overheating, you can say. So Scissor takes on the role of the commanding captain, and his first order is to escape the attack coming from below. No matter how fast they go, the monster is still hot on their trail. Zero points out it's not the Dragon King who is underwater, but it's his servant leading them to Norton, who descends off a cliff like a badass and calls his servant to thank him for the serves all those centuries before killing the monster to merge with it. Looking at what's happening from afar, Ma'i explains that since Norton couldn't hatch into his dragon form, he occupied the body of Samson, the dragon attendant. Her partner on the call reveals Ma'i's mission is to ensure that Lu Mingfei survives and that the client doesn't care if Norton dies or not. Speaking about the S rank, he and his queen are still making their way through the broken city with the guidance of Finger. Nono suddenly stops when they came across Sheng's body, with a strange bronze case strapped to his back. She admires how he sacrificed himself for his love to make it out. After Nono carries the case, they say their goodbyes to the certified lover boy. Suddenly, the upper wall began to crumble, and Ming Fei, as always, starts to freak out. His inner dog comes out and starts roasting him to become a man. When the main man snaps out, he finds himself in front of a gate, so he goes to open it using his blood while Nono holds back the crumbling floor. Sadly though, the cut is somewhat closed and not leaking blood anymore, so Ming Fei gets a knife to open it back up, but due to the pressure of the moment, he fails to cut his finger and drops the knife. When seeing his queen getting crushed and recalling the feats of the greater man before him, his inner dog once again calls to him to weaponize the power of his simping and take off the mask to bite his finger and open the gate. The professor manages to say, help, oxygen leakage, before passing out, prompting Scissor to lower the ship and order the men to prepare the diving bell while they head back to the river to retrieve Team A. Seeing this, Norton starts following. Back in the sea, Ming Fei dreams of his old schoolmates talking shit to him, only to wake up to a slap from the queen, who is sharing oxygen with him. Thereafter, Nana decided to give him hers while she held her breath until they could reach the surface, since she is a professional diver after all. Back on the ship, Team B is contacted by Zihan who came to help, but things don't add up since Zihan's power comes straight from the Dragon King of Fire. Thus, Scissor orders the crew to fire three torpedoes, special ones with writings on them that go fast enough to pierce the dragon's skin. Zero notes that they must get close to the Dragon King so it won't have time to dodge or melt it. Hearing this, Scissor heads out to fight the Dragon King head-on to buy time and get close for the rockets to get loaded and ready. Zero asks him to lift his Yanlin as soon as she tells him to, otherwise he will lose his hearing sense, due to the shot's loud sound getting amplified by his power. With that being said, the fight begins with Caesar unleashing his Yanlin. he covers his eyes to boost his hearing sense since his target is 100 meters away and he wants to hold the sniper rifle like a badass. The blonde John Wick shoot multiple bullets and the Swag King stops all of them except for one that lands right in the eye, making him mad to the point he decides to fight head-on with no caution. When the rockets are loaded, Caesar orders the ship to go forward. 
Seeing Miss Norton dives in return, Caesar removes his area power revealing Zihan in the sky right above Norton. The man of the hours uses his king fire attack, so Norton uses his to nullify it, turning nighttime into daytime. Caesar reveals he covered his eyes not to enhance his hearing but to not get blinded by the light he planned to distract Norton as an extra measure so he doesn't dodge and land the hit on him right in the tummy blasting him away. Back underwater, the pair finally see the light of hope, or in other words the light of the bell. Nono pushes Mingfei in first and right before entering it, Norton arrived and impaled Nono's torso with his tail. This trauma sends our main man to memory land where he recalls the times his queen stood by his side, encouraged and cared for him. Powerless, Mingfei passed out and woke up in a vision, in which he was resting in a sailing boat. Mingfei demands to go back as there is no time to sleep, but Ming Ze, on the other hand, assures him they can relax a bit since time runs slower outside the dreamland. Minzi asks why he wants to save the chick, and Mingfei goes on a rant about how he cares for her as she was the first person to treat him well and so on. Hearing the Simp Lord's determination, Ming Ze makes him an offer. He would give Ming Fei the cheat codes he needed to save Nono and defeat the Dragon King in exchange for the right to a quarter of his life. Since Nono had already lost 90% of her blood and Ming Fei was defenseless against Norton, the man accepted the deal. Has that girl changed you this much? For thousands of years, you've been so interested in many different things, but you would have never agreed to do anything like this before. Brother, you just fell into my trap. These are Ming Zhe's words to Ming Fei after the deal was made. Ming Zi gave him unlimited power for a short period, the ability to use a Yanglin skill of his choice, one use of Don't Die, and a powerful weapon. Ming Fei chose Scissor's skill and ability to breathe underwater. Ming Fei healed his queen and tied her to the bell robe so the crew can lift her back to safety. With the queen safe, Ming Zi tells him it's time to fight and gives him a cheat to stop the king from using Yanglin temporarily. He then throws the case made by Norton unleashing a set of swords representing the Seven Sins. Ming Zhe tells him, all the swords are powerful, but their usefulness depends on getting the right one for the job. That said, Ming Fei chose a yellow and a purple one, which happened to be the worst two according to Ming Zhe. Hence, what was supposed to be an easy fight became quite tricky, with Ming Zhe pointing out that the more time he takes, the more of a disadvantage he will be in since the cheat preventing Norton from using his power will expire. When Ming Fei becomes sad thinking about who would give a damn if he died, Ming Zhe pulls him back to the dreamland where he gives him some words of encouragement while telling him it wouldn't be fun if he decided to fall into depression now and give up his body. With his fighting spirit back, Mingfei uses his new Yanlin for the first time. Even though the increased hearing provided by Scissor's skill initially overwhelmed him, Mingfei, through the guidance of his boy, managed to calm down and locate the king. Taking advantage of his increased strength and speed, Mingfei managed to jump the king but stop at the last second seeing the face of his friend, Old Tang. However, Old Tang is no more as the one facing him as someone else, who doesn't hesitate to choke him out. Knowing the main man is a softy at heart, Ming Zhe steps in and delivers a dagger to Ming Fei, pushing him to stab Norton's humanoid body, making him sink to the bottom of the river while Ming Fei floats back up remembering the times old Tang was there to help and support him like a great friend. As everyone gathered around Scissor and Nono clapping for their effort, Zerum noticed her boy floating in sadness calling old Tang's name, who by the way was still alive kinda till finally it was put down by a philosopher's stone bullet shot by Ma Yi. Soon after the events, Ming Fei had a meeting with the principal, who promised him excellent grades as long as he wrote a thesis about the twin dragon system. When Ming Fei asked why dragons appear in human form, the principal simply answered so that others feel empathy towards them, and then handed him a photo of his buddy when he was still living as old Tang, adding, if it weren't for them stopping him, he would have unleashed a massive explosion killing countless numbers of people in revenge for his brother. After bringing the mood down, the principal then lifts it back with a letter from Ming Fei's mother, who congratulated him for his achievements during the mission and expressed her pride for him, and how they've been planning for the day he graduates. A tearful Ming Fei then gets asked about what happened during the dive since reports say after Sisser drove Norton down, he attacked Nono and injured her, but she miraculously healed. As Ming Fei is about to answer, he gets stopped by his boy. Trying to come up with any excuses, the principal tells him, Whatever you say, I believe you, so no need to worry. Back in the dorm, Ming Fei argues with by far the best character in the series on why he made him look like a loser next to Scissor, who is looking like a dashing prince, demanding he deletes the post. Their quarrel gets interrupted by Scissor knocking on their door asking for salt, revealing that he and Zahan live together and are making food for tonight's Valentine's party. Likewise, Nomno and her counterpart at the Lionheart Club live together. Speaking about the queen, she approaches the simp and thanks him for shouting her name making her not fall asleep while they were underwater. In other words, she doesn't remember a thing that happened after she got turned into a shish kebab. 
After role-playing like her little brother, Mingfei received a package from none other than the little devil. He sent him a phone to stay in touch without him dragging his ass to Dreamland. And for him to keep track of how many parts he lost from his soul. Meanwhile, Anju took Mingfei's 3E exam out of his desk. Noticing that Mingfei drew himself sitting by the window with Mingze, whom Anju recognized, the old G burned the papers saying, Welcome again, Mingfei. Ending the series on a cliffhanger. Curtsy of Chinese shows.